said earlier, I'm going to have to do something very dastardly. Look into my eyes and tell me I'm not willing to do those things. I've already shown you the easy way. What I've done to this point is what I consider the easy way. What do you think is going to happen when the world is watching on pay-per-view? What do you think is going to happen when we're at BFG, Bound for Glory, the biggest pay-per-view of the year for this company? The crowning achievement for me. Another feather in my cap, Rich. Now, you can say that you're not scared and you're not worried. You know what I'm willing to do. And the, the, fra- the problem is, for you, is I've only shown you a fraction of what I'm willing to do. I've shown you the easy way. From here on out, Rich, it's going to get very, very hard. Very hard for you. BFG is the biggest event of the year, and I'm going to make sure that people remember. Oh, you know. thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Um, the next one is um, Gary Cassidy, and we're going to find out exactly which media outlet he is part of. So, Gary, come and um, show, start your video and unmute yourself. Hey, guys. So, yeah, Gary Cassidy from Inside the Ropes here. Thank you for having me on. Um, I need to ask you two or guys who have spent quite a long time not being in the title picture anywhere and not getting the opportunity that you guys should definitely be getting, which you're showing us why over the programming we've seen recently. I need to ask, you're you're getting the time to tell that engaging story that's gone from Slammiversary all the way to Bound for Glory to the biggest events of the wrestling calendar. Why is Impact the place for you guys to be able to tell that story and just how much pressure is, the, is there for you to put on a brilliant main event at Bound for Glory? You know, it's just the fact that, you know, Impact Wrestling for years has always had a different drive. It's always had the most athletic uh, competitors. Eric Young being one of them. He, you know, is a person that in my young uh, wrestling career, I watched, uh, you know, and... Um, <sighs> Being in the main event, BFG, Eric, let me just get to what you said before, talking about, oh, uh, uh, I'm going to be able to do dastardly things. The only thing that you have done has shown that you are a coward. You've attacked me from behind. You have put my leg in chairs and stomped it. And let me tell you something, Eric, guess what I have over you? A victory. (laughs) <laughs> and look at the smile look at the smile on my face boy that, that, that made you lose your sanity that made you go a little crazy it made you a maniac right is this, is this your attempt at mind games with me Rich I don't uh, I don't play games I don't, I'm not a coward. I've never been afraid of anything or anyone in my life. The the form that I've taken, the place that I am right now, I won't be deterred. I won't be confused. I won't be turned off of the goal. And like Gary said, is is, this is a big deal. Uh, This is a big deal for you. And it's a big deal for me. And Impact is the number one professional wrestling show in the world. I am a professional wrestler. You are a professional wrestler. And when it comes to BFG, we're going to make history. There's not a single doubt in my mind. I I can see that you're passionate about it. I can see that you've convinced yourself that you have the ability to be there. You have the ability to last, that you have the ability to swim in the deep water. But Rich, this is going to be different. This is, you could talk about your struggles in life and your struggles in your career. The reality is, is I don't give a damn about any of that. I care about one thing, and that's the world title and the power at Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling is the best pro wrestling promotion, and I am the greatest pro wrestler today. World-class maniac, world-class professional wrestler, world-class man, world-class champion. Hmm. Thank you. Um, thanks, Gary. I'm going to put guys. you back to attendee now. 
thank you very much. Um, anyone, if anyone wants to raise, ask a question, please raise your hand as others are. Um, only raise it if you've not asked one, um, and we'll try and get around everyone, but I can't promise. Um, next is an old friend of mine, um, Jim Varsalone, I believe still from the Miami Herald. All right, Ross, Simon, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. All right, great. Yeah, get all this technology stuff, man. I like the old days. <laughs> Anyhow, hey guys, thanks for joining us all. Appreciate the time. I'm curious with the pandemic and all, and just dealing with all this big event bound for glory. What's it been like dealing with all this, getting used to it? Have you all learned anything of how presentation of the shows can be done when we get back to normal? Can we use anything that we've seen and incorporate that with going forward when we do get back to normal? I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's a very interesting time to be a performer. Uh, it's a very interesting time to be a professional wrestler. And if I could change it, uh, the pandemic would have never happened. But the reality is, is uh, this is where we're at uh, and, and everyone's dealing with it day to day in their own way. Um, for me, I'm an experiential person and I want to experience everything good, bad and indifferent. And the fact is, is that we're living history and, you know, we're a, a group of performers, a group of professional wrestlers, entertainers, whatever you want to call yourself, um, that is doing this in, in front of no audience and are doing it in front of a digital audience. And um, that's that stands alone. You know, it's uh, and I'm I'm not going to speak for Rich, but I'm I know that he's probably wrestled in front of few people, but never zero. And uh, there's a very different feel, um, a, a very different atmosphere w without people there. But uh, everyone's making the most of it. it for me, it, a lot of times it doesn't. I'm noticing that it doesn't change my preparation. It doesn't change how I go into it. It doesn't change my performance because it, it it's it's real. It's uh, it's very real to me. Uh, and like I said earlier in the call is I take everything that I'm doing deadly serious. This is my life. My whole life has been geared to being in the in this position. And uh, I think the results speak for themselves. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jim. Now, we like to have callers from all around the world on these calls. So we're going to go to a couple um, in different countries. First off, we're going to go to Stephanie, who I believe is calling in from France today. We bring uh, Stephanie in here. Yep, Stephanie, are you there? Call her in. Hmm. Okay, that doesn't seem to be... Stephanie, you there? Okay, I'm gonna, um, in the meantime, then we've got David. Um, no, from no, we got News... Stephanie. Oh, we got Stephanie. Stephanie, you're muted. Stephanie, unmute yourself and start your video. I'm here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Tu t'appelles Richard et tu vas très bien. Très <laughs> bien, merci. No memory between us. Um, I, Eric, I, um, Rich, um, hope you're okay. Um, I have a pretty devilish question to ask you both. Uh, if you could add a stipulation to the match, uh, to this already championship match, which one would you choose? Well, for me, um, because this dude tried to break my leg and make sure I could never walk the right way, I would choose a last man standing because I would beat him into a bloody pulp until he couldn't walk anymore. Eric? Yeah, I mean, last man standing sounds like a lot of fun, Rich. You, it's humorous, you beating me to a, a bloody pulp. <laughs> you have half the experience. You're half my size. You're half the performer. You're very good at what you do, but don't get it twisted, Rich. I am in a 
position much different than you. I am world class. You haven't swam in these waters before. You have not swam. So you better just watch what you wish for. There's many weeks in between now and bound for glory. Don't forget mm -hmm. that the power lies with me. I have control, Rich. I'm the champion. I have the power. You have nothing. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. I think you really started someone there. Thanks for joining us from France today. Um, and now, all the way from New Zealand, um, is David Dunn. And David's been with us on these conference calls. Like you guys say, you wrestled in front of four people. He did these conference calls when there was only a handful of people when we first got them going. And now we've got 50 odd people. So it's great to have David back with us from New Zealand. Good morning, gentlemen. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Um, this is a question, with all due respect to you, Rich, a question for uh, Eric Young. Eric, in New Zealand, where I'm calling from, we've got a newsreader who also has the name Eric Young. Uh, he's verified on Twitter. His username is Real Eric Young. And sometimes when you've done newsworthy events, he has to clarify that uh, some messages he's receiving are actually intended for you and not for him. So I was just wondering, has that ever gone the other way? Have you ever received a message intended for the New Zealander Eric Young? And do you have any advice for him in the event that after Bound for Glory, a lot of people are trying to send you some messages and some wind up going his way? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how long he's been the real Eric Young, but I've been Eric <laughs> Young for a long, long time. My advice to him is, uh, I understand that he's in New Zealand, but I'm a world traveler and he should probably change his name. That's, uh, that would be my advice to him. Uh, I don't remember getting anything, but I'm sure people get it confused, uh, especially when they're, they're trying to, to search for me right away. There's also uh, some uh, baseball players, Eric Young Jr. and Sr. Uh, for the United States. I think they played for the Colorado Rockies. So if you Google Eric Young, I'm the first pitcher that comes up. So I'm the real one. You are not. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks, David. David. David, David, real quick. Uh, if your friend uh, Eric Young gets any of those messages from those fans saying, oh, I'm sorry that you lost your Impact Championship at Bound for Glory, please tell them to forward that to this Eric Young of Impact. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for joining us. Um, next, we have Harry from Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Okay, Harry, if you can unmute yourself. All right, it's great to be with you. Uh, my question is for Eric Young. Um, I interviewed you for PWI shortly after you won the world title the first time. Uh, this is really your second chance at greatness. Um, did you accomplish everything you set out to do the first time around? Or is the fact that you're coming back with this wholly different, drastically different, dangerous mindset, a reflection of the idea that you, you're overcompensating for failures you might've experienced during the first time around? Yeah, I mean, there's no overcompensation uh, when you hold a, a championship and you lose it. I, I think any competitor would say it didn't last long enough. Uh, for me, um, I feel it was a very successful title run, beating the lights of, of Nick Aldis, beating Bobby Roode, beating Austin Aries, beating Bobby Lashley. Uh, there, there's a long list. I defended it every week um, and uh, very proud of what I did. But uh I'm in a different place. Uh, I'm in a different, uh, a whole different mindset, a whole different makeup. It, it, it's, it's, it's not a gimmick to me, the, the me in my purest form. I, I stopped caring about what people thought. And I thought I stopped caring about how people would perceive me. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to do whatever it takes to reach my goals and be in control. Like that's, as a professional, that's what you crave. And right now I have the power. 
I have the control. That's what the world title means. It means a lot of things, but those are the things that I hold most dear is power and control. And I have that. Uh, I have the championship advantage in every match that I go into. And that's, that's what I want. I, I want that power and control and, you know, and people can say whatever they want. You know, they, they can, they can believe whatever they want, but, but the version you're seeing now is the best Eric Young you've ever seen. And I'm figuring it out too. I'm only going to get better in this form. I'm only going to understand it better with each passing day, with each passing match. And that spells disaster for most anybody that stands in my way. Cool. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, Harry, thank you for joining our World Championship call today. Um, next up, I have Ian from SE Scoops. I'm going to bring Ian in now. Hi, uh, this is Ian Carey from SEScoops.com. I have a question for Rich Swan. Uh, Rich, you were on the show a little over two years ago when you had just signed with the promotion, and you've had quite the run in that time. You've been X Division champion. You've had entertaining rivalries with guys like Sammy Callahan. Uh, and now you're, you're headlining pay-per-views. You were in the main event of Slammiversary, and you're going to headline Bound for Glory. What has the last two years in Impact Wrestling um, meant for you in your pro wrestling career? You know, oh. Can you hear me? We got you, Rich. All righty. You know, uh, the last uh, two years for me in Impact Wrestling has definitely been like a recharge. It's been something that, you know, it, it brought me up, uh, as everybody knows, uh, before Impact Wrestling. Um, you know, I was in a downtime and I was retired, but then uh, some people brought me back and brought me into Impact Wrestling, and I've done nothing but take opportunity after opportunity uh, that's been given to me, and I am nothing but grateful for Impact Wrestling for giving me these opportunities. And, you know, now that I've, you know, gotten the opportunity to wrestle Eric Young at Bound for Glory, I'm going to seize it, baby. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and next we have, um, I believe, Tim Battle. Tim, you're going to have to. Yep, I got you. Hey, guys. Uh, it's a battle with the Battleground podcast. This question's for uh, EY. So it's been some time since Slammiversary went down. Looking back on the events of the match that, you know, transpired between you and, and Rich, was your attack personal or was Rich kind of, you know, at the wrong place at the wrong time? And is there anything you would have done differently? Yeah, I mean, I could be the first to admit that I, that I underestimated. Uh, I underestimated the, the position. Uh, I, under, I underestimated Rich. Uh, and I can say that I don't often make mistakes twice. Now, it, it was never personal for me. Uh, I, I feel like I, I was very clear in my intentions. Uh, I was very clear in the warning is that I just said to stay out of my way uh, and, and, and don't be in front of me when I'm trying to, to reach my ultimate goal. Uh, unfortunately, Rich had to learn the hard way, as did Eddie. Uh, as, as did his wife, as did Tommy Dreamer, and the list will go on and on for anybody that stands in the way and tries to take the power away from me. Uh, I tried to not make this personal, but Rich seems hell-bent on making it personal, and I ain't got no problem. I ain't got no problem with that. You saw me at Slammiversary. That's business. You know, that's just strictly, purely business. If you want to make it personal, you're going to see a, a side of me that you're not prepared for. You're going to see a side of me that you're not interested in being around and nobody will. So losing and throwing a temper tantrum and trying to break somebody's leg is business. Business. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, next, we have Dane from Hooked on Wrestling. Okay, Dave. Hello. Um, 
wanted to say really excited for the pay-per-view coming up. Um, wanted to ask, with you both having competed in the ring for so long, who would you say uh, for both of you has been your, both, uh, been your most kind of formidable opponent and how does your opponent for Bound for Glory compare? I'd, I'd say for me, because I've uh, dealt with these crazy maniacs before, uh, Sammy Callahan for sure, and, uh, you know, he kind of has that same style. And uh, that's why when Eric Young hooked me for the pal driver at Slammiversary, I, I said, oh, wait a minute, I, I have been down this road before. And I switched it, got him in that small package, you know what I'm saying, and uh, got that one, two, three. So, Eric, you better not be trying to do any pal drivers, baby, because uh, you already know I got the counter for that. Okay. I mean, maybe it's the pile driver. Maybe it's uh, the ankle hold. Maybe, maybe I, I, I take your foot home with me, Rich. The, the truth is, is I've shared the ring with uh, you name it. You know, I, I've been doing this for over 22 years. I've wrestled Sting. I've beat Kurt Angle. I've, I've taken Bobby Roode up and down the mountainside. I, I've yeah. wrestled Bobby yeah. Lashley. I've, mm -hmm. I've wrestled everyone. Yeah. So, you know, for, for me, uh, there is no comparison in experience. And you wrestling Sammy Callahan does nothing, does nothing to prepare you for what's next. Cool. Thank you so much for your question, Dane. Excellent question. And um, now, obviously, this is going out live on Facebook as we speak. And Ross has had a couple of questions from fans in from Facebook. So I'm going to hand over to Ross. Yeah, guys, we got a uh, Facebook question that came in from uh, Hakeem Fullerton. Uh, and it's actually for both of you two. We'll, Rich will let you go first. Uh, same question. Is there anything else you'd like to achieve in your career before you retire from wrestling? Hmm. Anything else I'd like to achieve? Well, the number one thing I'd like to achieve for sure is making sure at Bound for Glory, I make Eric Young think about what he's done and take what he holds near and dear to his heart which is the Impact Championship. EY, we'll throw it to you. Same question. I mean, the truth is, is, is everything from this point is cherry on top. I set a goal to, to sign a contract. You know, my first goal in wrestling was to sign a full-time contract to say that this was my occupation and this is what I do for a living. I accomplished that in 2004 and have had one ever since. Um, I feel like uh, longevity is, is something to be praised, you know, uh, versatility is something to be praised i've seen and done it all and i and i said it uh, you know several times on this call and several times uh, from other people's question that this is me in my purest form this is me at my most dangerous and, and rich uh can do whatever he wants he, he he can try to take the world title from me but but that's not going to happen it's not going to happen at bound for glory and it's not going to happen any other time he's not going to take it nobody's going to take it it belongs to me impact wrestling belongs to me cool. and next we have mike gilbert from combat republic Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Hey, guys. Uh, just a, got a got a question for you. It's pandemic related. I know so far, and you've already discussed about how you've been wrestling in front of an empty arena. Is there a plan to introduce audiences for Bound for Glory or any time in the near future? I'm foreseeing it, uh, not, not at Bound for Glory. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, next up, we have Brad Marcus. So th this question is for Eric. Um, so since the early 2000s, how has the locker room changed to wh where it is right now? And do you have a hand in shaping that as the champion? 
Yeah, I feel like uh, locker room, a pro wrestling locker room, changes weekly. You know, it's it's a, uh, it's kind of a, it's got its its own mind. It's got its 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 own kind of organism where it, you know, it shapes and shifts depending on who's there. Uh, I believe that I can change a locker room, and I I believe I can change it for the better. I, I believe Impact Wrestling reached out to me and offered me the contract they did because they know. Um, that I'm going to set a tone. You know, I'm going to to set a bar on performance, on professionalism, on ability, on on desire, on, on all of those things. It's 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 something. All of the stuff that's involved in, in being world champion uh, and being the flagship uh, performer of, of any company is something that I take deathly serious. Um, I'm never going to tell guys what to do or preach or or get on a pulpit and and and, tr- and explain myself. But uh, I'm going to lead by example. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, to do the right thing always and um, help to grow this company, uh, help to make the locker room a better place because of the success of the company. Um, none of us uh, are in a position to, to make money or, 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 or be, you know, uh, recognized or, or champion or, or performers if it's not for impact. And the only way to guarantee that is have impact grow as a brand. And that's something that, uh, I think everybody there takes very, very seriously. And for me, um, in my opinion, it, it's what I take the most serious of anything in wrestling. I've accomplished everything uh, that I've wanted to in wrestling a thousand times over. Uh, and I believe I'll, I'll keep doing that. But what's most important to me is, is longevity and uh, having a place to work and, and having that place thrive. And, and I feel like since Slammiversary to now, I feel like the proof is in the pudding. Um we set a bar at Slammiversary and I feel like every week we're trying to smash through that. And, and that's what a good wrestling company does. Thanks for your question, Brad. Well, thanks, Brad. Um, next up, we have Rory Bailey from Team Venom Media. And while we wait for Rory, just to remind people, please raise your hand if you want to ask a question. If you have already asked one, please put your hand down. We've got so many people waiting. I just want to make sure everyone, as many as we can, get to ask at least one. Okay, hi, Rory. Hello. Hi, sorry, it kicked me out of Zoom for a few seconds there. Um, what I wanted to ask was that your um, feud in Bound for Glory has probably been the most personal thing on impact this year so far. What can we expect to see from you both in the main event? Well, I know you can see from me. Uh, I know you can see from me trying to protect my leg that Eric Young just so uh, is so fixated on. Um, and you'll also see probably the most aggressive side of me you've ever seen in my whole professional wrestling career because I know that Eric Young is a maniac. I know that he is no joke. He's not joking. He's not the same guy he was before, dancing around with ODB, winning knockouts titles and stuff. He's the guy that I need to take serious, and I'm taking him as serious as a heart attack. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thank you, Rory. Sorry, guys. Next up, we have um, Callum McKines. Hi there. Callum from Ringside is wrestling here. My question is for Eric Young. Eric, you mentioned that it's not personal with Rich Swan, and he's just in the way of your ultimate goal. Eric, you're already the Impact World Champion. Where do you go from here? What is your ultimate goal? Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't personal. I, I said that it was business, and, and I mean that. That's uh, it's 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 never going to be personal from me unless they make it personal, and that's what he's trying to do. Uh, I get that that's a, that's a technique that works on some people. Uh, to me, it seems like a desperate attempt at, of shaking me or, or having me off my game. You're going to see the exact same version of me. Uh, 
just elevated because now he's making it personal. Uh, for me, what's next is, is uh, I'm the world champion. I have the power. Uh, I have say in what goes on. I have the championship advantage and that's how it's going to stay. I, there's uh, lots of people will say, I'll do whatever it takes. I'm proven. I've shown people in the last several months that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to whoever. It, it doesn't matter to me. I, I have no affiliation with anyone. I have no friends. I have no one I trust. I'm on my own. And, and in this business in wrestling, uh, that's the most powerful position to be. I care about nothing except for the world title and myself and my own success. I won't be distracted. You know, I, I, my goal is to be the longest reigning world champion in impact wrestling history. Thank you. Thanks, Caleb. Thank you, Callan. Um, next up, we have Michael Morales Torres from Lucha Libra online. Uh, hi guys, can you hear me well? Yes. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for your time uh, to Ross Simon. Uh, this question is for uh, specifically Rich Swan. Uh, you face some challenges during your life. Uh, well, the situation with your mother, your father, you've been pretty open about uh, the drug situation. Uh, how does a person that's been through this rough pathway makes a uh, change so drastically and puts himself in the correct pathway and it's now uh, going for the Impact World Heavyweight Championship and bound for me. Uh, what was the thing that inspired you to change your life, Rich? I think we're having a few technical issues. You know, that's something that comes from within, you know. Uh, it's just I wanted to prove to myself that I can be so much more than things uh, that I've seen growing up than the product of my environment. And uh, with that, hello, can you hear can, me? We can hear you, Rich. Hey. Okay. Um, but uh, that was just a personal drive for me, uh, trying to make sure that I'm not a product of my environment and uh, trying to give people inspiration that if you come from where I come from, or even if you don't, you know, that whatever that are put in front of you, you could beat that and you could rise above that and you could be better than Hey, hey Rich, that. Rich, Rich, I'm gonna, I'll cut you and, off here. It's Rich. Uh, I'm living proof. Let's cut, Rich, I just want to cut you off. Maybe we can get to a different area. Uh, audio is very bad there, so yeah. um, sorry about that. Uh, Simon, okay. let's move on so, to the next question. Yeah. So next up is James from that 90s wrestling podcast. If we just make the next couple of questions for Eric while we try and sort out Rich's connection, that'll be great. So um, I'm bringing James, for James in now. Thanks, James. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, first question is for Eric Young. Uh, you're the current world champion, which you fly the colours of uh, Impact Wrestling really proud. Uh, where would you like to see Impact Wrestling go in 2021? For me, it's up. You know, it, it's it, that's always the goal for any place that uh, I'm employed at. Uh, for me, Impact is is home. Um, you know, it's a, it's obviously a different version from where it was from before. Um, 
and uh, I've said this in other interviews, is there's tons of people to thank, uh, people that are here now, uh, people that have been here and moved on to, uh, to other places. But um, it's not lost to me that there was a lot of hard work done to, to, to get to where it's at. And, uh, Anthem Sports, putting it in position to be on Access TV, which is, is an excellent home for Impact Wrestling. Uh, the, the, the signing of the Pluto deal, which gives us uh, bigger visibility and... Uh, you know, a, a huge platform internationally, which uh, is pretty evident by the call here. I feel like there's tons of uh, international media on here today. Uh, that feels good. You know, for me, it's it's onward and upward. And uh, by giving, uh, you know, 100 percent effort every time I'm asked to do something or put in a position to do something, you're going to get everything from me. This is is my life. You know, pro wrestling has been my life. Um uh, it's all I've wanted to do since I was three. I started my signed my first contract in 2004. Uh, everything I do in my life is geared towards being the best performer, the best athlete, the best uh, professional wrestler that I can be. Um, Impact Wrestling is reaping those benefits, and I'm in a position to to show those talents because of where Impact Wrestling is. Um, the truth is, is I'm a wrestling fan. Uh, I was a wrestling fan before I was a wrestler. I continue to be a wrestling fan. And in my opinion, and it sounds biased, of course, but it's where I work, but I, I try to watch everything. It's the best pro wrestling show on TV, pure pro wrestling, storytelling, athletics, drama, uh, you know, storylines, gimmicks, uh, you know, it has a little bit of everything. Pro wrestling is the ultimate variety show and impact wrestling is top of the heap right now. It's uh, it's the only wrestling company that's growing. And I think that's something that everyone should take notice of. Yeah. Thank you so much, James. Always good to, always good to speak to you. Um, next up we have Michael. I'm just going to try and bring Michael in. Michael Cav Cavassini. I hope I pronounced that properly, but I probably haven't. Hey guys. Hey Michael. How you doing? So uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, you're talking about longevity and I'm just curious about who inspires you when it comes to longevity uh, with your career and reinventing yourself and just making sure that, you know, you're constantly thinking of, you know, what you can do next. So you don't become too complacent. Uh, yeah, longevity is something I don't know if anyone uh, sets out, you know, early on in their career for that to be a thing. But, but once you uh, you land, you know, like once you sign that first contract or you kind of end up uh, where where you were were wanting to be, uh, I think longevity becomes the number one goal. You I mean, I, I want to do this for as long as possible. Um I've always kind of promised myself that if I couldn't do it at a hundred percent, that I wouldn't do it. And, and part of that is because I, I love professional wrestling. I respect it with every fiber of my being. And I, I don't want to be someone out there uh, dragging myself around and whatever. Um, I've said this in interviews before. I've been very smart with my time in wrestling. I've been very smart with my money. Uh, the truth is, is I don't need to be doing anything, you know, uh, you know, financially, I'm in a very good place. Uh, professionally, uh, I am in a very good place. I'm at impact because I choose to be there. Uh, and there's nothing more powerful than choice in any profession. Longevity to me is maybe the number one accomplishment for me. Uh, I've been on TV every week almost for 16 plus years. Uh, and there's very few people in any profession, in any television uh, genre that can say they've been on TV every week for 16 plus years. Um so yeah, knock on wood, uh, I've remained healthy. Uh, I've remained passionate and, and I feel like my work shows that. Um, but for me, it's uh, Terry Funk said something and I've said this in other interviews too. And it really struck home with me many, many years ago. Someone was asking him about why he was still relevant at like 55. He was main eventing an ECW pay-per-view at 50 or whatever he was um, against Stevie Richards and... I can't remember who the other guy was, but it was a three-way for the world title. And he said, Terry Funk is always going to be Terry yeah. Funk. But but the wrestling industry changes daily. And if I don't change with it, I die. And and I, I've always 
thought that way. I think wrestling is very different from what it was even five years ago. And there's tons of things that that uh, I don't agree with. Uh, I, the changes that are happening daily in wrestling that I don't like. Uh, that that um, I'm never going to to look at wrestling that way. I'm going to look at and believe in a certain type of wrestling that I believe in. Um, and 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 that's how that's how I view it. But wrestling changes every day, and uh, I, I try to change with it, but also try to be true to myself and 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 true to what I believe good pro wrestling is. Thanks, Thank Mark. you, thank you, Michael. Um, we have Dylan Hughes next of the Pro Wrestling Post. Yeah, how's it going? This question's for Eric. I know you were talking about longevity. I was just wondering, obviously, you're in the peak of your career still. You're Impact World Champion. But how many more years can we expect you as an in-ring performer? And when the time comes for you to retire from in-ring performance, do you have any wants of wanting to be backstage somehow doing a behind-the-scenes role? Or would you rather just kind of fade out and get on with the next section of your life yeah uh, i mean i feel with wrestling is is you just never know you mean you never know when your time is up and i mean if i'm being completely honest and transparent that time could be up at bound for glory you know every time you step in the ring or or you do anything there's an inherent risk at what we do with what we do um it's dangerous, you know, and, and I wouldn't change that. I love the physicality of wrestling. I love the competitive side of it and competing with myself to make myself better. Um, but the, uh, the truth is, is I, I've never set a number. I've never said, uh, you know, I'm going to wrestle till I'm 50 or I'm going to wrestle till I'm 55. I, I told myself, like I said earlier, is I'm going to do it as long as I can do it at 100%. There's nothing physically that I can't do right now that I couldn't do that I could do 15 years ago. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, it is, it is not a gimmick. This is me in my purest form. And I think this is me at my best. And I think that my work is showing that. Um, I feel like wrestling will always be part of my life. I I think uh, because of my unique experience and my longevity and kind of seeing the, the show, the card or whatever you want to call it from every angle, I've been in the opening match. I've been a comedy act. I've wrestled women. Uh, I've been in tags. Uh, I've won the tag titles with six different tag team partners, world titles with six different tag team partners. Uh, This is my second run at world title. I've held every kind of title that there is. And uh, I've been all over the card. I've worn a mask. (laughs) I've I've done a a pile of different things. And I feel like there's very few people in wrestling that have that kind of experience. And that's something I'm very proud of. I wouldn't change any of it. It, It's all unique to me and it's all uh, giving me a very, very wide brush view, a very wide uh, lens of what wrestling is and what it can be. And um, I think I'll always do something in wrestling, but once I retire from the ring, I'm gonna disappear probably for a couple of years, live in an RV and travel the United States. I've seen the whole country, but I've never really been there long enough to experience it. So that'll be, that'll be what I do. So you won't see or hear from me for several years when I'm retired, but that ain't no time soon. Awesome. Thank you, Dylan. Um, next up we have Vic the Villain. I believe his website is called Hills, Pops and Chair Shots. How you doing, Eric Young? Hi, right, thanks, thanks for the opportunity, guys. Rich Swan, how you guys doing? Um, and, uh, my question is for both of y'all, man. It's been this feud has been well documented, and you guys have said before you're gonna make history on October the 24th. Eric Young, you specifically have mentioned some of the legendary names you've been have wrestled in the past. Um, what's 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 the what's the forecast going forward after Bound for Glory to the winner? Um, what are some of the names you guys might want to work with? after the fact yeah for me i mean the uh, i've said this too and i, and I want to be very clear is this locker room has unlimited potential and that's that's just being real that's that's uh from a pro wrestling fan uh in me looking around and and, and seeing uh 
potential is what the word means. It, it, it doesn't mean that it will manifest itself. It doesn't mean it will become what it could be, but it's exciting to look around and think like, oh, like I, I could do something with him and that would be special and that would be interesting. Um, so, it, you know, the, the, the potential is unlimited. Uh, sharing the world, uh, the ring with Rich it, it is something uh, I don't know, I'm excited for is that the, it's, uh, it's a very, very, very wide canvas that we get to paint with um, story first. And I think that's something that I think he would agree with. Um, but it, it's an exciting to look around and see the potential that's there. Uh, uh, the hard work, there's all kinds of hard work in front of us. We, we've, uh, we've, you know, we've, we're growing the audience. We're, we're collecting eyeballs as it, as it would say, but the hard part is keeping those eyeballs and, uh, multiplying them. So it's, it's exciting to, to see where it can go. And, uh, I will be excited to be defending the world title on, on future future pay per views. Okay. You know. Thank. You. Thank you, Vic. Rich, I think we're still having problems hearing you, so I'm going to bring in um, Lee Walker for the next question. Gotcha. Can you hear me? Cut your cut your video off. Let's see, let's hear this, Rich. Can you hear me? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. No one wants to look at you anyways, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, cool. So now we can hear Rich. I'm going to bring in our next questioner, who's Lee Walker. Um, I believe Lee's another one from over here in the UK. And then, you know, maybe if Lee, if you can ask Rich the question, then he we've got his audio working again, so that'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, my question's for Eric. Uh, the question I've got is, Eric, we've seen how relentless you've been with Rich Swan. With that being said, you have a 71% winning rate at Bound for Glory. Knowing that percentage rate, will you continue your relentlessness at impact on rich until bound for glory or will you change things up to throw him off yeah 71 percent. i feel with how many bound for glories that i've worked at is a pretty pretty impressive percentage but the truth is is there are no numbers uh that can back uh, uh where i'm at the truth is 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 I was a very different person. I was a very different athlete. I was a very different professional at that point in my career. Um, I've got a chip on my shoulder. You know, I've got something to prove. And I feel every week I'm, I'm, I'm showing the world uh, what I'm capable of. Uh, Rich wants to believe that this is personal. It's never been personal for me. He's trying to make it that way. And if he wants to continue to make it that way, there's no problem. I will be at my most masochistic when it's personal. Uh, you know, I will be, I will be a terror. I will be a very big problem for him and for anyone else that gets in my way from what I want. And that's control. That's power and, and control and power in the world of professional wrestling comes with the world title. Awesome. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Lee. Um, we have Alex from the worldwide sports radio network for the next question. Uh, my question is for Eric Young. The last time you held the Impact World Heavyweight title was in April of 2014. What will, what will be different from your past title reign versus now? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mentioned it a bit before, but uh, I was wrestling not for myself. You know, that, that was a very different version of me. That was uh, a, a different uh, attitude. Uh, a different personality, uh, a different way of thinking. Uh, I, I, I clearly don't have that type of mindset anymore. Um, I, I'm worried about me and me alone. And, and uh, it's something that took me a long time to learn in, in wrestling, in this business, in this sport, is no one's going to look out for you. 
You know, you, you're, you're completely on your own. Nobody cares about you except for you. Uh, so every decision, uh, everything that I'm doing, every move, every, uh, every bit of my being is poured into protecting myself, protecting what I hold dear and at Bound for Glory, uh, I have one goal and that's to leave with my world title. It's, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's something I take deadly serious, very, very serious. And, and in no way am I thinking that, that riches is, is something that will just be, uh, pushed aside. You know, it's, he's in this position because he's earned it. But the reality is, is I'm on a different level. You know, I, I'm willing to do things that I know rich is not willing to do. I'm willing to go places that rich is not willing to, uh, I I'm willing to do things that an average person isn't willing to do. I'm, I'm willing to do things that people can't even think of. You know, they don't have the ability because they don't have uh, a shared experience like me. So it's, you know, it's a much different time in my life, a much different time in, in my professional career. And uh, the focus is tenfold. And, and uh, I think it's shown in, in my actions uh, and is shown in my words. Cool. Thank you, Alex. Um, next up, we have Bison from TNI UK. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, well, first thing I'd like to say is congratulations to uh, to Eric and uh, Rich for main event in the uh, biggest pay per view of the year, uh, Bang for Glory. So congratulations for uh, for for being the main event, which is fantastic. Um, my question um, is is probably to both of you really, but. I, I'm not too sure whether um, Eric is, is fully aware of some of the fantastic history that, that Rich has made over the last couple of years at Impact Wrestling. Um, primarily, some of his incredible matches that uh, he had at the tail end of 2019, which actually made him probably one of the breakout stars of the year. Um, do, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you think you might be underestimating him a little bit, Eric? Or, or, you know, or maybe not, I don't know. Do you think you might be? No, I, I think I'm well aware of Rich's success. I I I, I, I followed very closely. Uh, the truth is, is is going into Slammiversary, I was well aware uh, of who Rich was. Uh, we've crossed paths before. Um, the truth is, is I've been Rich Swan. You know, I've been that guy. I, I had my breakout. Uh, you know, I was the 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 fun loving guy the 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 uh, I was a a version of what Rich Swan is and, and the truth is is that I've mutated to something better something pure uh, something that because of my longevity and and my my time in the wrestling business my time you know in my position you know atop of the heap is I understand things that Rich can't because of experience. Uh, there's no way that I have taken him lightly. He is uh, uh, an incredible athlete. He is a, an incredible competitor. He is uh, scratch and claw for everything. You know what I mean? He, uh, you know, he, he is a, a spectacular, spectacular professional wrestler. But like I've said a hundred times on this call, and I'll continue to say it, is I'm willing to do things that he's just not willing to do because he's worried about what people are going to say or what people are going to think or, or, or the ramifications of that. It, it, it's just the reality is, is I'm in a different place. I'm in a different mindset. Uh, I'm in a different physicality category. And, and I'm something that you can't prepare for because I don't know what I'm going to do. How do you prepare for someone that doesn't even know what he's going to do himself? The, the answer is that you can't prepare for that. I am prepared for rich because I was rich. I've been that guy. I've been the guy, the fun loving hero. I've been the, 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 the goofy sing and dance and idiot. I've been him before. You know, I, I, no one understands rich better than me because he's living my truth, my but old truth. You know what, Eric, but you know what, bro, you are underestimating me. You are taking me lightly because several times on this call, you have said, oh, he's not willing to go as far. He don't know. Look, let me tell you something. Let me turn this camera on real quick. Look at this. 
That's a picture of my torn up ankle. And the doctor told me, hey, you're not going to be able to do what you love anymore. And guess what? I busted my ass. Yeah, just like you said. I scratched and clawed, and I am willing to do anything. There's nothing nobody is going to be able to say or do. Awesome question, Bison. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Next, we have um, the Big Gold Belt podcast. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, this question is for Eric. So it's very clear that Impact believes in you and they see endless value in you. But it's also very clear that you didn't return to make any type of friends. Uh, I would say getting on Scott's the more bad side. Eddie Edwards, I'm pretty sure, has unfinished business. And again, you have Rich Swan set for October 24th for Bound for Glory. Are there any concerns in your prep heading into, heading into Bound for Glory that you rough some feathers in management and you never know what actions they may take and throw at you because of yours? I mean, there's no worries there. I mean, for me, it, it, it's like I said, uh, just in the last, the last answer was, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And there's no way to prepare for someone like that. Uh, there's, there's no way for me to decide what I'm going to do because I don't know. I, I'm going to let the spirit of where I am in life and where I am professionally guide my hand. Uh, Rich has felt that. Uh, Rich has spent several time, several days in a hospital. Rich hasn't touched me. Rich hasn't hurt me. He pinned me. I'll be the first to admit, I mean, he, he, he caught me by surprise and he did beat me at slam reversary and they eliminated me from that match. But I don't know if I should be upset about that or I should thank rich because soon as that happened, the instant that happened, it started the ball rolling for me in a completely different direction. Uh, you know, it, is you, you have a, a preconceived notion of what you're going to do and how you're going to react. Uh, and the truth is, is, that was thrown out the window because I thought things were a certain way. But as soon as that happened, I realized that I was in a very different position. I was in, uh, in a position where I, I was going to have to protect myself at all costs. And uh, management can, can do whatever they want. The reality is, is I have the power. I have control. I have the championship advantage. They have no say in what goes on. They have no say on, on how I conduct myself and how I, I per perceive to defend my title. Eddie Edwards found out the hard way of what I'm willing to do to get that belt. And I did it. And I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm proud of what I did. I'm proud of being in the position I am. And that's all self-induced. I've created this situation. Everything here that's happening now is by my design. I've been saying it and screaming it on television, but that's just a sad reality for everybody. The, my design was set in place when Rich upset me, when Rich beat me at Slammiversary. He created this situation. I tried to show him the easy way, but he, he decided that he wanted to do things the hard way. So we're going to do them the hard way. You tried to, tried to show me the easy way. You know what? I'm a guy who likes taking the hard way, Eric. And I'll tell you now, we're going to see October 24th if you're going to be thanking me. Okay, we've got Andrew. Move on to Andrew. So, sorry, Mr. Chambers, I cut you off there in your video. That was my mistake. Sorry about that. So, hello, Andrea. Hi there. Um, so my question is for Rich Swan. Um, given the ankle injury that you've been dealing with how is that going to affect your in-ring style against Eric Young because you know he's also going to go after the ankle but because of your high flying style typically uh how is that going to switch things up for you at Bound for Glory you know uh I'm not really going to reveal that too much but I have been working on a very good game plan uh because I know uh, just because of the fact that after I beat him and he knew that it took seven long months for me to get back to where I was. And, you know, uh, those first seven long months uh, of training and busting my my tailbone to get to where, you know, get to that main event at Slammiversary. And as you saw in Slammiversary, my style 
if you compared it to before I, you know, crushed my ankle and broke my leg and my back, it was very similar. And uh, I was doing the high flying. I was very fast. I was quick on my feet. It was almost like I never missed a beat. Uh, but, you know, now uh, since Eric Young has, you know, re-aggravated and re-injured me, uh, and I really haven't been able to uh, test out if I could still do the same things I could do. But the thing is, I've been studying Eric Young for a very long time. I've even buried up some old tapes of his, and uh, I've got some little tricks up my sleeve. All right, right. Andrea, thank you. Please tell Riju we don't know yet when we're going back to India. I know he wants to know. <laughs> have an update. Trying to get Josh on a one-way flight there. I haven't been able to book that yet. Please do that soon. Very soon. Cool. Okay, next we have Joey from the Angle Podcast. <laughs> How are you guys? My name is Joey Carney from the Angle Podcast, and my question is for uh, Eric Young. Uh, since returning to Impact, you've been on a world-class destruction course. I mean, regaining the Impact uh, World Championship after several years away. And since then, Rich Swan has been, quite honestly, the only one to defeat you since you've returned. Are you more focused on retaining your championship or rewriting that wrong that is a loss to uh, Rich Swan? Uh, it's probably a little of both. I mean, it's, it, uh, I'm not embarrassed to lose to Rich Swan. I, he, he is, uh, you know, for lack of a better uh, word is what I call myself, but he is a world-class class athlete. He's a world-class professional wrestler. Um, it, it, you know, people that were in that match, all the professionals in that match were top of their game and that's why they were there. Um, you know, every dog has its day. And he, he talked about, you know, his, his ankle being hurt and him coming back and not missing a beat. If he's not careful, if he keeps running his mouth and wanting to make this personal, he might not make it to bound for glory. You know, a, a three-legged dog is still a dog, but let's be honest. He's not winning any physical competitions. He's not chasing the Frisbee like he used to. He's not bringing the ball back as, as fast. Three-legged dog is still a dog, but he's not the same. That's how I view Rich. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Joey. Um, we have Jeffrey Coleman next. Can you hear me? All right, cool. Uh, my question's for uh, Mr. Young. And uh, you were talking about you're such a dominant force. And we've seen it in the past with dominant forces. We've seen Kurt Angle get multiple belts. But then we saw Bobby Lashley get multiple belts. Do you see going after any other championships? I, I mean, for me, my, my focus is on being the flagship of, of Impact, is being the flagship performer. And that's that's the, the world champion. That's uh, That's been my goal since I started in wrestling. Uh, and that, that will always be my goal. Um, I've held the exhibition title. I, I've held the tag titles. That is all something that is possible. But right now, my focus, my goal is being the world champion. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, next, we have George McKay. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, it's a two-part question for Eric and uh, then for Rich Juan. Eric, you've mentioned a few times the lengths you're willing to go. Uh, Rich, Rich isn't prepared to go those way. Have you not taken into consideration that Rich is kind of a man with nothing to lose? If this doesn't go his way, he's not going to have the belt on his on his waist and he may be out permanently for good. And Rich, if the spots happen in the match where you have an ability to go to those dark places like Eric, will you? For me, you know, I mean, uh, 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 you go ahead, Rich. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'll definitely go to those dark places as you have seen me before. If you go back to Rebellion on the Impact Plus app with me and Sammy Callahan, and I know I use him for, you know, uh, reference a lot, but uh, I use staples. I used powders, I used weapons, I did whatever I could do. I used barbed wire and I also 
put that barbed wire across his face and made him scream and cry in agony and tap. And Eric, if you don't think I won't do that to you, brother, you got another thing coming. Yeah, I'm. I'm not talking about uh, using weapons. You know, I mean, I, if any any person, any athlete, it, it has the ability to do that. It, it, it's it's a mindset, Rich, is what I'm talking about. It's it's you know, it's a place that you have to take yourself. You have to get there. You have to get worked up. Or you gotta you gotta get upset. You gotta do whatever. You're a visitor there. That's where I live, Rich. That's my permanent residence. That's where I decide to be. Uh, you know, you're a tourist, man. You know, it's a, you're, you're a tourist. You're a, you're the, the guy wearing the cowboy boots and the cowboy hat downtown Nashville pretending he's a cowboy. Those are the easy part people to pick out. That's a tourist. You know, be going to the dark places and being dark and 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 going to the places that actual regular people aren't willing to go. That's something that. I mean, I have no doubt that you can go there. I, you know, I, I'm watching tape too. You and Sammy Callahan were physical. I mean, that was that was a battle. That was a war. But the reality is, is that's not what you're used to. That's you know, you're you're gonna have to visit that. You're gonna have to go to a special place. I'm already there. I'm there, and I'm waiting for you. So go ahead, bring your suitcase. Brother, I'm from Baltimore. I don't care Baltimore, where you're from. More Maryland from the hood, my brother. And uh, let me tell, let me tell you something. Uh, this dark place that you're talking about, it's probably going to look like Disneyland, you know, like a nice little vacation. Yeah, I am a tourist of your little dark place, and it's almost as fun as a uh, space mountain. Thank you, George. Um, next, I have Bill Gardner from the Total Nonstop Impact podcast. Hey, hey guys. Uh, my question's for both uh, Eric and Rich. Uh, I was seeing after Slammiversary with the multi-man match, uh, do you guys feel extra pressure in this one-on-one -on -one match at Bound for Glory without fans? Uh, I mean, for me, there, there's always pressure. You know, it's it, uh, I consider myself to be, uh, you know, a, a professional uh, of the highest order. So for me, no matter where I am, uh, on the show, it, 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 there's pressure and there's pressure to deliver in a certain way. Um, the most pressure comes from being last, you know, being in, in the marquee match, being in the main event, being in the world title match. Uh, the truth is, is uh, I've been doing this a long time. I know Rich has been doing it a while too. Um, I don't really get nervous, but I'm better when I'm nervous and, and I'm nervous. You know, it's, it, it, it's a lot to live up to, but I'm better when I'm nervous and uh, I'm better when I, I'm worried about it, uh, better when people are, are, are waiting, when there's expectations. And uh, I, love, I love that pressure. I live for that pressure. And, and that pressure is, you know, it's iron sharpens iron. And I, I know we're going to come up with something very, very special that people are going to remember. You know, and I can definitely attest to what Eric said. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely like, this is just my second match back, you know what I'm saying? And uh, just to be in this main event with somebody of the caliber and uh, on this platform, it, it, it means a lot. And, you know, like you said, we are going to do some things no matter uh, if there's uh, a thousand people or zero people in the building. We know that there are people that pay their hard on money to see this all around the world. And, uh, you know, we're just going to go in. Thank you, Bill. Please keep up the good Good work, and we really appreciate all your support. Um, next, I have Dean from Body Slams and Dropkicks podcast.
Can you hear me, chaps? Oh, we can hear you, Dean. First of all, thank you for having me on. Uh, my question is for Rich. Um, obviously, EY is the Impact World Champion, but if you were to become World Champion, what would differentiate your reign from all the other Impact World Champions and specifically Eric's? You know, I can't uh, say what would dif differentiate my reign from others in impact wrestling or in TNA in history, but uh, I can answer to why my title reign would be different than Eric's. And that is because I'm going to be an honorable champion. I'm going to be somebody that you can respect. I'm not going to be going around uh, taking people out, uh, jumping people behind their backs, uh, throwing temper tantrums and being jealous. But, you know, that has gotten him uh, to the spot to where he is today. Uh, but I just got a little bit more pride in myself and in my work to not get to that level. Thank you very much, Dean. Um, we'll make this the, the last question. Um, if anyone didn't get to ask for any reason, so I think we've got through everyone who had their hands up. If you didn't get to ask, drop me or Ross a line and we'll make sure that you get to ask first on the next call because you know, we've been inundated tonight, so we've tried to do our best to get everyone on. So the last question is over to Connor Casey. And there we go. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Excellent. Uh, this is for both you, both Eric and Rich. Um, guys, I'm actually sitting a, a few miles away right now in Nashville from uh, where you guys have been taping Impact these last few months. Uh, I'm curious, has there been any indication if uh, live fans will be back anytime soon or if they'll be back for Bound for Glory? Uh, as far as I know, there is no plans to do it at Bound for Glory. There is very limited space at Skyway Studios. Um, for me, I mean, it's something that I know uh, as a professional and as an entertainer is we're all craving it. Um, but, it, you know, it, I feel like we've done the work and, and the, the proof is in the pudding is, is, you know, we're willing to do whatever it takes to put on a good product. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind and, and in pro wrestling minds fans is the product suffers, you know, when there isn't fans, fans are, are part of the show. Um, they're an important part of the show. And I feel like uh, as an entertainer and as a person that's been doing this for a long time, this, it gives you a very interesting perspective on how important they are, you know, and I feel like we definitely won't, uh, take for granted when there's people back in the building i don't think any any entertainer anywhere is going to uh take it for granted because the reality is is um nothing is guaranteed uh, and uh this is proof of that right now i'm excited for fans being back but uh bound for glory i don't imagine there will be i don't i don't know um that's uh, above my pay grade uh if I had my choice, it would be full. You know, we'd be wrestling in some <laughs> some arena somewhere and it'd be full, but that's just not our reality right now. But uh, hopefully the world opens back up and I know that it feels like that's what's where it's going. And um, I'm not going to get political or, or make any guesses, but uh, I think uh, in a month or two, I think the world's going to look very different. Yeah. All we can do is just embrace... Uh, this uh, COVID uh, era of professional wrestling and just try to give it our 100%. Uh, and like Eric said, we just, you know, never will take for granted ever again when fans finally do come back. Thank you, Connor. Appreciate your question. And uh, I think that'll wrap it up for today, uh, guys. I, I appreciate both your times very much, uh, Simon and Sam on our, our back end uh, media. Just a reminder, as Josh had mentioned early on, we are going to be doing press pass uh, at least once a week, if not twice a week, between now and Bound for Glory. Uh, with that, I will turn the floor over very briefly to Rich, your final thought, and we'll go to Eric. Can you say that one more time? You cut out. Yeah, I know. I just we, We're giving you the floor for, for a final thought. Hey, my final thought is, uh, you know, I really don't have one because the only thing that is on my mind is just getting this revenge on Eric Young and becoming 
the Impact World Champion. And not only because I know that's going to rise my star and help Impact and help myself, but because I know that Eric Young loves that championship. He loves it, the way he holds it. I've been sitting at home watching Impact, and when he's raising it up, he's just so prideful. Well, I'm going to take that pride away. I would say uh, for me going into this as world champion is my advice to Rich is to watch what you wish for. Uh, we're not at bound for glory yet. You know, there, there's many, many weeks left in between now and then. And the biggest mistake you could make is, is upsetting me and, and trying to make this more personal than it already is. Revenge is a cruel mistress. Pride is having pride in this industry is a slippery slope rich and i said it before a three-legged dog is still a dog but the reality is it's pathetic it's pathetic and so are you stay out of my way keep your hands off my world title and if you make it to bound for glory we're going to see how willing you're you're going to be how willing you're going to be to go to those places that you talked about I don't care about where you're from or what you've done in the past. You haven't experienced anything like what's going to happen to you at Bound for Glory. I promise you. Well, last week you said I signed my death wish. Well, you're going to have to kill me. All righty. Well, we are on the road to Bound for Glory. Saturday night, October 24th. And everybody, I thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week. Eric, Rich, thank you guys very much. Simon and Sam on the back end, thank you guys. Media, we will talk to you next week.